Well, welcome everyone to uh, another fantastic multi hold Solutions webinar. Uh, we're now fortnightly with these webinars and today we're testing the boundaries of technology. We're doing a, a walkthrough of the NEIL 51, uh, which is in the marina in uh, Phuket. We're just going to hold fire as we do each week. We're just going to hold fire until everyone who's registered uh, logs on. I, I can see the uh, participant numbers uh, racking up there on the screen. So I'll just let that build up and just uh, waffle on for a couple of minutes until we've um, uh, until we're comfortable that we've got everyone who was going to join us joined. Uh, you can probably see in your screen there a, a beautiful picture of the Neil Fifty One, which is. Uh, uh, hope that I spent quite a bit of time on at the start of this year up in Thailand with Andrew and Charlie. Uh, you can see Andrew standing on the dock there. Give us a wave, Andy. And uh, Charlie's on the end of the camera and in the background uh, helping make sure all of this works properly. We've got Rachel. And happy birthday to you today, Rachel. So um, just a couple more minutes before we uh, get into the technicalities of today's presentation. Just uh, let the numbers clock up there, and then we'll, uh, we'll get rolling. Okay. All right, so uh, I think we can get started. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, two o'clock. So uh, welcome everyone to the Neil 51 live walkthrough. Uh, you can see it's a nice day there in Phuket, a little bit of cloud. Andy was just telling us, Andy and Charlie were telling us that it's very hot up there, very uh, humid. Uh, so they're looking forward to getting inside the boat to uh, do the presentation. Um, I'm just gonna flick through this screen here to the next slide, uh, which always does this to me. I'll just, uh, there it is there. So if you do have any questions today, you can pose them on the Q and A box. If you uh, post a, a question there, we'll attempt to either answer it as we're walking through or we'll do a question and answer session at the end. Uh, but we will do our best to let Andrew know the questions as he's in each area of the boat so that we can keep questions relevant to the area that he's situated in. Uh, so that's fairly normal. I think there's a few people here on the webinar today who've been on our webinars already. So you're getting used to our style and our approach for answering questions. Our next webinars, uh, in two weeks time, we've got the uh, Gordon and Louise Coates are going to give us a good walk through and a, a, sorry, a good uh, presentation on their big adventure, sailing the Elba 45 Larrikin from uh, France, uh, all the way across the uh, Atlantic through the Panama and then across the Pacific in a fairly good uh, time they did it. They did it in uh, three months, including a trip back to Australia in the middle. And then uh, two weeks after that, on the 17th of July, we've got the walkthrough of the Iliad 70. Uh, and then 31st of July, a, a one that's gonna be very well patronized is tips for purchasing the pre-owned multi holes. We'll be doing that with brokerage manager, Patrick. And then two weeks after that, we're gonna do a walkthrough like we are today of the MY44. <coughs> Importantly, next week, we're actually going back to face-to-face -face selling. We've got our upcoming event, the Sydney Open for Inspection Day, which is good for anyone who's in uh, New South Wales or Victoria, basically. And we have people coming from both states. We've now got some people who've actually booked flights to fly up to Sydney next week. And at the moment, we've got really good registration for that, but there is still a few slots. And if we have to, we'll stretch it out to the Sunday if the numbers continue to grow the way they are. But anyone who's in New South Wales, or Victoria who'd like to come and see the Elba 45 or the MY44, uh, we'll be doing that at Rush Cutters Bay at the end of next week. So looking forward to that. It's fantastic that we're able to actually get back to physically meeting and talking to our uh, to our, our customers. Now about the Neil Trimarans, um, fantastic uh, product. Um, it's going well in the marketplace. They've uh, They continue to evolve. Uh, they continue to improve. Uh, Andrew and myself were at the Neil factory back in January. We, we go there each year and catch up with the Neil team and go to a conference or a sales uh, uh, meeting there. 
And the Neil 47 has been on display at boat shows around uh, Europe over the last couple of years at the Cannes Boat Show last year. And we're very fortunate at Multi Hole Solutions to have a Neil 51 that we've been able to show and display uh, over the, the, the last few months. Obviously, in, uh, at the Thailand Yacht Show in Phuket at Christmas, our de then plan was to then have it on display in Singapore, but obviously with COVID-19, that got uh, a stop got put to that. And then the good thing, or the big news coming out of Neil, is that in the next uh, four to six weeks, they're going to be announcing a new model. Uh, so uh, we are looking forward with interest to uh, see what that model will be. But the, the Neil range is going well, and it's in interesting on, on certain uh, Facebook sites and so on to see more and more Neils sitting on the water than there was a year or two ago. So it's a, a sign of the success of that product. Uh, why a Neil Trimarine? Uh, and Andy will talk about this more as he does the walkthrough, but certainly there is a performance edge to the Trimarines. Uh, their ability to sail well upwind, their ability to sail uh, at, at good pace. Uh, they have very low surface tension because there's less of them touching the water. And uh, they're also comfortable. Uh, there's a lot of safety involved in terms of the design. They're innovative. And the, the, as you're about to see when Andy takes us aboard the Neil 51, there is an immense amount of space. So on that note, uh, as I say, my name is Greg Boller. I'm the new yacht sales manager. A lot of you will get used to the fact I've been hosting these webinars now over the last month or two during the COVID lockdown. Rachel in the background who is uh, making sure everything works properly. And then today presenting is the uh, general manager of our business, Andrew De Bruin. Uh, he started his career many years ago as a charter yacht skipper in Greece and Turkey. We actually worked together back in the uh, 90s up on Hamilton Island as when he was the operations manager of Sunsail. Uh, he's cruised extensively and he's been living in Asia now ever since he uh, arrived there on his own yacht, his 36 footer. Uh, and um, over the last five or six years has been um, one of the owners of Multi Hole Solutions and managing the Asia business. And just in the last 12 months has now taken on the role of general manager of the group of Multi Hole Solutions. So on that note now, I'd like to hand over to uh, Andy. I'm gonna turn off the share screen, Andy, and bring you on as full screen. And you can introduce yourself and, uh, and get us rolling on the walkthrough of the Neil 51. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh, good introduction. Uh, and uh, welcome, everyone, to sunny Phuket. We've got rain clouds on the horizon, but hopefully we'll, uh, we'll stay okay for this little webinar anyway. So here we've got the, the Neil 51. Uh, clearly, it's a trimaran, and Greg's given you a little bit of a uh, a little bit of an intro into the into the shipyard. Uh, they continue to evolve and they're getting better and better, new models, et cetera, et cetera. We're very excited to represent the brand. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're looking for an owner for this stock boat as soon as people can start to travel. So standard Neil 51, uh, this is the standard rig. Uh, you can get a performance rig on this boat as well. One of the advantages of a trimaran compared to a cat is that you can keep the rig tension uh, on the trimaran a little better because the whole rig is in the centre hole so that your forestay tension and main sheet tension and everything is a lot easier to uh, translate into the structure uh, as opposed to being on a beam. Uh, but anyway, come on board, we'll wander down here and step on board the Neil 51. I'm not a tall guy, but you can see a decent amount of freeboard here, which you'll see uh, results in some really nice cabins internally. Got good access onto the boat from the marina or from the water. So Andy, as you're walking across there, we all, we've already got a question. So when you get to the Davit discussion, let me know and we'll pose a question to you. So, sorry, Greg, what was that? Uh, we've already got a question there so uh, about the Davit arrangement. So when you get to the Davits, if you could uh, discuss the, the two different options there. Sure, yep. Um, come on board and 
what you'll see here are a couple of chocks to hold a dinghy. Um, these boats used to have a little uh, rotatable davit here uh, to put the dinghy on, but now they use a captive winch on the topping lip and simply a remote control. You'll see the topping lip can drop uh, and then picks the dinghy up and comes on board. In fact, on uh, the Neil website at the moment, there's a lovely little uh, video showing you exactly how that operates. But uh, we've done that on this boat. Um, it works very, very well indeed. The, the size of the tender, the maximum size is about 3.4, 3.5. Um, one of the features of all of the Neil models is that they do sail very nicely. And so they really, they're very attentive to weight. And so when you're putting a dinghy on the back of the boat, whether it be a trimaran, a catamaran or any boat, uh, you're putting a lot of weight uh, exactly where you don't want it. Um, so really limiting it to a 3.4, 3.5 metre with a 15, 20 horsepower is ample for most cruising and, uh, and keeps the weight to a minimum. Easy to handle as you get on and off too. And Andy, so, Andy, if someone did want to uh, do a normal davit arrangement rather than the uh, the boom arrangement, it can be done. Um, it could be done. You can still have the small crane arrangement here if you wish. But uh, to be honest, I don't understand why anybody would. Um, this system does work very, very well indeed. And when we get up to the up to the flybridge, up to the lounge area, you'll see that the lazy jack systems. Uh, is beefed up, this is all standard, so that it's designed to support the boom when you're using the topping lift for the, uh, for the dinghy lift. So coming through here, we've got uh, the famous Neil Cochloon, which is a, a mixture between, uh, sorry, uh, a joining of the saloon and the cockpit. Uh, they've patented the name as far as I know. Uh, and you'll see this whole door arrangement opens all the way up to here. We've got four panels which all fold back into here. And on the trimaran, uh, this is relatively easy to do because you don't have the same structural loads as you do on a cat. Uh, it's very, very hard to, to open this up on a catamaran. On the Neil, you've got the four stay on the bow. And you've also got your main sheet loads, which is the other half, if you like, coming down to the main hull structure. So there's very little loads uh, on, your, uh, on your coach roof, which is what this needs to support. Um, this particular boat, we have uh, a cockpit kitchen, which storage, fridge, um, quite useful. And this is another option we've selected, which gives you access up to the helm station. So, what we'll do now is I'll just show you there's two aft lockers in this boat for storage, which are huge. Um, follow me, Charlie. So what we have here is one of the cockpit lockers and we have two of these. I'll jump in to give you an idea of the size. locker has got all the room for your cruising gear. It's three meters long, almost two meters high. Um, this particular one here can also be transformed into a uh, captain's cabin if you want. So if you're looking to crew charter or anything like that, they can put a bunk in here, we can air condition it, all that sort of stuff. So it's not huge, but for a, a charter captain, this is absolutely fine. Or it can be an overflow cabin for you if you wish. So this is a large, um, a large storage area, and we've got the same on the other side as well, which we'll go past now. That's a huge space, Andrew. Sorry? That's a really big space, isn't it? It is. It's a huge area. And Charlie can show you the transoms here. Uh, so you've got great access. You've got ladder on the uh, port hull give you access into the water, uh, mainly because on the centre hull, of course, quite often you've got your tender. So you can have a ladder on either side 
uh, very, very simple. And Andy, as you're walking past, the lifelines, what, what are they all made of and attached with? Uh, these are made of Dyneema, um, and so they can be tightened. Dyneema now is, uh, is well accepted. Uh, they're nice and soft, and they certainly don't rust. So coming past here, these are the two main sheets. So you've got uh, like a German main sheet system on these boats where you've got uh, no traveller, but you have two main sheets, one on either side of the boat. And very, very simple if you're off the breeze to lift these off here, connect them further outboard if you want. So you've got a whole pile of options with your main sheet system. So I think Firstly, we'll go around the boat on the outside because the rain is threatening and it'd be good to get that out of the way before I get wet. So here is the other cockpit locker, similar size. What we have in here at the moment is our Jenica in a sock and we've also got uh, a stay sail. We, I'll talk to you more about that as we go up on the bow. Moving forward, we've got handrails all the way around the boat. So it's very and this is foredeck area. Good, good secure trampolines. We have a gas locker in here, which has also got room for a lot of fenders and things like that. We have Huge lockers in the bow. Charlie can show you that one. One on each side of the boat. And again, if necessary, uh, depending on your selection of options, these can be fitted out with a bunk. So if you're really trying to get maximum number of people aboard, uh, you can add another couple of berths up here in the uh, <coughs> in the port hole. And Andy, I see that on all the kneels, they have that kneel flag there. Is there a this purpose one, for that? Uh, the idea of this is just to give a little bit of a uh, raised item so that you can see it from the helm station. On this boat, when we get up there, you can see three quarters of the boat very, very easily. And having this here just gives you a guide to where your, uh, where your port bow is. Uh, it works perfectly. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you know these boats, they've got a single engine and a bow thruster, and they will turn on their own legs. Very, very manoeuvrable. Moving on to this side, we've got a um, standard type anchor locker. Okay. Nice big anchor winch, and on the trimaran, of course, uh, there's no problems with uh, needing a bridle or anything like that to anchor. This boat uh, anchors and lies at anchor just like a monohull. You've got uh, a keel, you've got a centre hull, so it's exactly the same as anchoring a monohull. Um, you can see here a tang for the inner forestay. Uh, standard on the needles now um, is a removable in a foresay, whereas uh, on this boat it's a fixed foresay which we've taken off just because we're using the boat here for demos and we're using it locally, flicking it through tacks and things all the time. So that having an inner foresay does make the Genoa uh, slower to tack, there's no question about that. And the sail, when it's on the inner foresay, uh, is a self tacking stay sail, and you can see the track across here. It's a single sheet to the clue of the stator, which goes up the mast and then back to the helm station. Basically, when you're tacking in, if you're having the stator up in sort of 20 knots of breeze, the boat's perfectly comfortable and you can tack it with one finger. You don't really have to touch anything. Um, solar panels, again, there are many, many options for different power ratings on the solar panels. This is all we have here, which is just as, uh, to keep batteries topped up and things. But if you require, there's a whole pile of coach roof back here. You can see that you can cover with solar panels. 
and there's no no problem at all with getting two to two and a half thousand watts of, uh, of solar power on this boat. The uh, Janica uh, on this boat, which we have as an option, is in a sock. So it's a very, very simple system to put up and down. Uh, the whole idea of these boats is that they're easy to handle with two people, you know, and we've sailed this boat many times with two, and it certainly works. The Jenica attaches on those two saddles you can see down there, pull it up, tack line comes back to the cleat, and uh, a very, very easy system to work. All right, so anybody got any questions on bow and sail area, headsaws and things while we're here? Uh, at the moment, Andy, there's no questions in the Q&A, so you must be doing such a good job that no one needs to know more. <laughs> good, hopefully there's people there. Right yes, so we, yes, there are. Again, hand holds all the way around. Another locker here, which is the mirror image of the one on the uh, on the port side. You've got your comfortable bow seats, and really, when you're underway, there's nothing better than sitting up here. It really does. Uh, it, it, it's most enjoyable. So we come back here on the starboard side to the helm position. And you'll see that all the lines come back to here. Okay, on multi holes nowadays, this is a fairly common way of doing things, and it really does work. It works very, very easily. We've got on this boat two electric winches. You can have more, the others can be electric as options as well. What we have here is a halyard winch, which uh, the halyard being two to one on a 21 meter mast. You've got quite a bit of rope to get through, so it's quite nice having the electric halyard winch. And then, of course, here we have captive winch, uh, which is for the topping lift. So this one here, I can pull the boom up and down and control the dinghy lift if I want from here as well. This basically doubles up on that little remote control unit that I showed you in the cockpit. But uh, Genoa sheets all come back to here. Everything is here very, very easy to operate. Um, then we go back around here to the helm. Um, if you maybe come around here, Charlie, better idea. This boat has, as I mentioned, a, a single engine, which is a Volvo 75 horsepower, uh, and a big bow thruster, okay? A, it's a max power bow thruster, and the Volvo 75, so you've only got the one throttle. Um, very, very maneuverable. The rudder is behind your prop shaft, uh, behind the uh, sail drive, so that you can spin the stern around and you can spin the bow the other way. It's actually very, very nice to use. These are standard uh, BNG instruments with the electronics package from Neil. Uh, chart plotter, GPS, log, autopilot, windless control, etc. Um, and the bow thruster control as well. As well. So just uh, before you move away from there, Andy, um, keep going for now, but just sit down for a minute when you're ready. We've got a couple of questions for you. All right. Well, um, I'll sit down in this nice comfy helm seat and Charlie can start to head up to the uh, lounge uh, deck, which is not a true flybridge in that it doesn't have a helm station there, but uh, very, very comfortable indeed, as you can see. Okay, so one of the questions, Andy, is uh, Simon has mentioned that he he's saying it's great to see the bow seats have been added. And uh, can you summarise what are some of the other improvements Neil have made? Um, I think a lot of the stuff that Neil does is incremental. Um, so that really, if you compare this 51 to one from, you know, four or five years ago, um, it'll be different, but not groundbreaking structural things. You know, it's like the bow seats and things like that. You know, the handrails along the side, these are all options that we can pick. Um, so it's a constant uh, evolution rather than saying, you know, oh, what a major advantage this is. I think when you see uh, the 47 and the newer model coming out, uh, which I'm not allowed to tell you anything about, uh, you'll notice quite some changes on those. Uh, excuse us just for a moment. We've had a 
a boat just start up their engines next door. Hopefully you can hear me still okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. And just one other question. It was a question we got asked a lot there at the Thailand Yacht Show. When the boat's moored like it is now at the dock, because it's a trimaran, does it tip one way or the other in the water like some trimarans do? No, it's not a, a racing trimaran where you've got a big dihedral angle to the floats. Um, this is a cruising trimaran and so the floats all sit in the water at all times. Um, as you sail, the boat heels to sort of 12 degrees uh, maximum and then you're, you're fully powered up. But when you're at a dock, um, you can move around the boat and it does not rock, okay? The, the, uh, the armors, if you like, are in the water. They've all got anti-fouling on them and they're in the water to probably that much, okay? The main draft of the boat obviously is in the center hull and we've got a draft of uh, 1.8 meters on this boat. So it's not huge, um, but it is enough with its spin keel at the bottom to make the boat go to windward quite nicely. Excellent. That was a question from another Andrew. So thanks for that question. Uh, I think you're good to keep going, mate. All right. Um, if Charlie spins around now, you'll see the main sheet system. So you've got the two, two main sheets there, which allow quite a good uh, trim capability on the main. And you can also see if I can get up there. You can see the uh, laser jack systems all beefed up through good sized saddles, so these support the boom, no problem at all. Uh, standard uh, lazy bag, you've got your sun pad here. Um, nothing particularly uh, groundbreaking here. Uh, all of the uh, main calves are all on roll bearing paths, so the main sail goes up and down beautifully. The main sail is about 90, two square metres, I think 95 square metres, and the Genoa we've got is about uh, 75 square metres. So the boat sails very, very nicely. This is a, a 14 ton boat. Uh, so she does sail nicely and it will ghost along in, you know, five to 10 knots of wind, no problem at all. Um, you can hold the full main uh, nicely for 20 knots, easy. And at 25, you know, you'd be, you'd still be okay with the full main and the staysail and anything over that you'd be starting to put in the first reef. But uh, very, very easy with the reefing lines and everything all coming back to the helm station. The boat, uh, the boat will truck along while you do things without a problem. So what we'll do now is I'll wander downstairs. If anybody has any questions about uh, rig and sails and deck equipment while we're here, uh, please feel free to, to shout. There's none there at the moment, Andy. You've obviously right. covered it all well. Just as you're wandering down, mate, it looks very warm there. It is very warm here. Now, <laughs> as we come down, uh, Charlie will show you the access through on the inside to the cockpit, whereas I'm actually going down on the outboard side of the, uh, the helm station and going into the cockloon. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions here, Andrew. Um, a performance rig, what does the performance rig offer? Simon has asked. Okay, the performance rig is a carbon rig, which uh, I have to check the spec, but I'm pretty sure it's another 1.8 meters higher. Um, it's still an alloy boom, but uh, clearly if you put that extra sail area on the boat, she does perform very, very nicely. Uh, I was sailing one in La Rochelle uh, last year with a performance rig, with a carbon rig on it. And uh, we were sailing in eight, nine knots of breeze, 10 knots of breeze. And we were doing eight knots with the Jenica up, you know, on a close reach. It was beautiful. We were doing very, very close to the wind speed. And, you know, for a boat that's a cruising boat, uh, that, that's quite nice to do. And then up on the flybridge there, any couple more questions before you get into the aircon? Um, sure. up, up on the flybridge there, um, the um, flybridge seating, there's no, is, is there any storage under those? No, no storage under that. That's just, uh, that's just the seating. 
Uh, not that one, the actual flybridge ones, but I agree. So up, up there on the, um, on, on the flybridge couches. And then also one question before you go and sit. What you actually have under there is uh, a lot of the air conditioning and stuff for the saloon is up under that area, which ends up being under the flybridge seats. And then where does the life uh, uh, raft sit? Um, normally you'd have the life raft somewhere back here. We don't have a dedicated life raft on this boat. People put it in all sorts of different positions. Um, depending on the size and the type of life raft, uh, if you don't have the, uh, the cockpit kitchen, there's a perfect spot for it right there, uh, just next to the uh, steps up to the helm station. Remembering that you've got three boarding platforms here, so that really you can very easily sacrifice one of those with a, uh, with a life raft sort of mounted right there, ready to go if you wanted to do that. Another place I've seen it mounted uh, on these boats is actually this area down here. So it actually sits underneath the tender, which keeps it out of the sun when you're cruising. Okay, thank you. So walking inside, um, we've done the we've done the door. So you've seen how the door uh, closes this whole section off perfectly. This table in the saloon uh, is adjustable, so that goes up and down, down right to a coffee table, or it can come up and um, rotate around. This folds out and you can make this into a dinner table, same as this. And so you can seat 12 people if you wish, no problem. Uh, saloon seating, as we move forward, you can see there's quite a bit of storage. All of this is storage. You have this would where, is where you would normally uh, mount your television. Uh, this boat we haven't mounted the TV. We haven't selected that option, but it would be very very easy to do so. Um, hey Andy, Andy, your camera stopped for a moment there. Can you just go back and show us the saloon table again? How that unfolded just then? Oh, certainly. Okay, so you've seen how it goes up and down. It's just it rotates around through 90 degrees and then each of these leaves come out and on the other side and then we can bring it up to a dining table. See that okay? Yeah, that's great. Very, very, very good. Very, very easy to use. Um, in here you have access to the engine room, which we'll show you in a little while. Um, but this is your galley. It's a great galley. This, uh, you've got, I think it's 20 square feet of workbench. Um, this particular boat is set up with gas, but of course you can have electric options. You can have all of those sort of things. Dishwashers, ice makers. We've got a microwave here. Uh, large fridges, 230 litre fridge drawers here. Very nice fridges. Um, more storage under here. Um, This is your water bottle, Greg. <laughs> and look so, at that. <laughs> <laughs> you've got uh, drawers here, large storage lockers under here, and really good size opening ports uh, on this side and also on the other side. So when you're at anchor on this boat, if you uh, if you've got all the opening ports uh, open get great breeze through the boat. Um, it, it's really, really nice. And that's exactly what you want in a galley. Also, of course, being on the bridge deck, you've got a fantastic view. Uh, we're a little bit hemmed in here because we're in the marina, of course, but when you're on anchor, working in this galley, you've got all the space and light that you'll ever need. Freezers are over on this side. Charlie, can, this, this, this is your freezer in here. So, um, I think that's pretty much it in the galley. As we come around, you've also got more storage in here. Cupboards here. Similarly here. 
and then I'll swap places with Charlie and we'll do the uh, do the owner's cabin. Just while you're swapping places with Charlie and Charlie's showing the uh, camera back on the outside, have you known of anyone that's done cockpit clears? Yeah, no problem at all. Um, they do a cockpit tent and you can put clears around that for sure. That's, that's an easy one. Or mosquito screens or whatever you wish. And if you do that, you've got an absolutely huge living area here that's you know, an all weather living area. Excellent camera work, Charlie. <laughs> Merci, Monsieur. <laughs> so, nav station here, pretty much standard on a lot of boats. Uh, you've got the sound system, you've got uh, VHF, of which you've got another hand set up at the helm station upstairs. Chart plotters, autopilots, uh, battery monitoring systems, AIS control, etc. is all here. Uh, little nav desk here drawers under here and storage shelves around there and then on the bridge deck which does not happen in many catamarans of this size you have the owner's suite so we've got people here uh, this boat uh, this is a pretty standard sort of layout. This is a double bed, uh, 1.95 meters by 1.7. You've got, uh, you can look, the view out there is fabulous. You can show people the view, Charlie. I'm sure they would appreciate having a, an owner's cabin up on the bridge deck. And then uh, if Charlie comes around here, you can see the shower, separate shower and head and bathroom here. So Andy, you've actually done some cruising on this boat now over the last few months. H how do you find this owner's cabin functions, mate? Is it, is it good to live in for a, a period of time? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. One of the advantages on this boat, and you'll see that as we go around in the various cabins, is that you've got uh, very separate sleeping arrangements so that um, when you're in the owner's cabin here, you can't hear people in the float cabins on either side because they're in a completely separate little boat, if you like. And then the fourth cabin is up in the bow, which is where we're going to be going now, uh, where we go in a minute. So that uh, living on board with a few people, you definitely have a lot of different areas where people can hang out. Uh, even apart from the deck, just your sleeping arrangements uh, are very private on those boats. And it must be amazing to wake up in that bed and look out that window. <laughs> it's better when you're on anchor and not in the marina, but it's, uh, it's not bad. So we'll go down now into one of the uh, cabins. We'll go down into the uh, starboard float, starboard armour, if you like. So we've got a door here, which can be locked off. But once you're in here, um, Charlie, when he gets down here, will show you, show you around. Lots of storage. This up forward, you have the head arrangement. You've got head, shower in here, uh, all with their own hatches and lots of ventilation. Um, vanity unit here. And then as you go aft, you'll see the, the big double bed lots and lots of light, um, escape hatches and all of these sort of arrangements. So good size hanging lockers here and then you've got shelving arrangements in here and as I say all of this is really pretty standard this is a standard Neil 51 um, we didn't add a huge amount of options once you passed electronics and gen sets and things like that so this is a pretty standard boat we'll just wander through to the bathroom
Charlie, if you'd like to maybe go over to the uh, port side. And I won't come down and show everybody that cabin, but it's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, again, you've got a door here, slides across to give you privacy, but um, So if you've got a newborn baby, good place to keep it. <laughs> Fish while you're in bed as well. And I see on the wall there, uh, Andrew, uh, air conditioning controls. Yeah, this boat's uh, fully fitted with, a, uh, with an air conditioning system. It's tropical rated. Um, And you found that reliable? Obviously, Thailand's the greatest place in the world to test aircon. Yep, well, it's working okay now. Okay, one thing to point out on this boat, which uh, is not standard, is the uh, flexi teeth through the saloon galley and nap station. This is something we've added. Hey Andy, I'll just stop you for a minute if that's all right. I don't know what Charlie just touched or did, but all of a sudden we've got some crackling noise. Okay, are you, you okay there now? Yeah, have you turned the aircon on, have you? No, no, no. No, okay, I think that's better now. There was just some crackling, like snap, crackle on top. Oh, I'll um, let you keep going. No, that's okay. So you can see on the floor here, this is the flexi teeth, which is really nice on your feet through the boat, uh, but this is an option. Uh, through the galley and everything. Standard is uh, this bowl on flooring, which is a synthetic, uh, synthetic type flooring, which I really like. It uh, gives you great grip and it's very, very hard wearing. Uh, very, very easy just to vacuum clean. We've not had, uh, had any wear problems or anything like that. So that's standard in the, in the holes and, and most of the flooring. Now I'm just going to walk down to the fourth cabin, you know, you've seen three, and this is this is obviously in the centre hole, and we're going for it in the centre hole here. Uh, it'll be a little bit tight, so uh, Charlie's going to have to have to work hard. As we go down the steps, you can see here the switch panel. So you've got your DC panel here, AC panel here, uh, as well as um, bilge pump controls uh, and all of your instrument switching on and lights. Okay. So this is a uh, forward cabin, uh, again, hanging locker, storage, big, uh, a big uh, sh uh, drawer under the bed, and a good size, good size bed for a couple here, no problem. You've got uh, hatches in the hull, hatches up above, so loads and loads of ventilation. Today we've got the aircon on, of course, and it's, uh, it's quite nice in here. <laughs> I could stay here for a while. Um, access through the floor here into the bilge, to uh, instruments and through hole transducers. And then we'll turn around slowly and Charlie will walk into the head here, which is uh, sort of the head for this cabin, but also could be used as a day head because uh, this is not connected to a cabin. It's not all sweet. Breathe in. Breathing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to show you the access into the engine room, and to me, um, as a sailor, this is one of the lovely things about the boat. Um, it was interesting at the Thailand Yacht Show in January, Andy, that this was the feature that blew people away the most. Yeah, a, a lot of people really appreciate this. Um, anyone that's been cruising and worked in an engine room, 
you know, trying to change start motors and things over at sea and you've got your legs up here and your head down there. This kind of area here, you, you will appreciate. I just need to turn off the compressor there. Uh, one second. They are nice and quiet. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I've had to turn the air conditioning off, so uh, bear with us. So, good access through a decent sized hatch. Uh, obviously, you've got to remember to close this hatch so people don't fall down here. You've got a nice secure ladder. So we've got full standing headroom through this. Um, this aft section is obviously engine room, um, where we've got the 75 horsepower Volvo with uh, driving to a sail drive. We've got a 115 amp 24 volt uh, alternator and also a 100 amp uh, 12 volt alternator because the boat's electrics uh, throughout the, throughout the boat is 24 volts and we've got 12 volts for engine and gen set start. Uh, obviously you can get to everything really, really nicely. Uh, and then back in here, you can see steering cables, you can see the hydraulic ram for the uh, autopilot, you've got your steering quadrant, and you can get around the back of that so that really you can, you can get to any piece of equipment on this boat very, very easily. Uh, changing oil filters, fuel filters, etc. It's not difficult at all. So now, Andy, just... this, Andy, there's a question there about the steering mechanism. Um, yep. So it's, uh, what's that, a dynamic? What, sorry, can you just it's explain? Yeah. yeah. And how does it feel when you're helming it? Oh, it's lovely, lovely. I mean, hydraulic steering, which would be quite common on a boat this size, um, is very, very effective, but you do lose a lot of feel. Um, with this boat, it's a joy to sail. You know, when you're powered up, you can start to feel a bit of weather helm. Uh, the boat sails a lot more like a monohull. Um, a catamaran versus a trimaran is another whole discussion, but suffice it to say that the trimaran because you've got a, you can put a tighter rig on it quite easily, will tend to sail a little bit better to windward. And also when you've got your main hull, which is digging in the water with a thin keel, etc., the boat feels a lot more like a monohull and will generally point higher than a catamaran. Remember that we're not talking, um, you know, racing cats or racing tries here. We're still talking cruising boats. Now I'll swap places with Charlie. Um, Wonders over there. You can have a look at the Lobasto uh, reverse cycle aircon system. And so, what we have here, this technical room here, has all the equipment on the boat. Uh, anything heavy on the boat is right in the center of the boat, in the main hull, pretty much under the mast, which is fantastic for. I'll be horsing, your, uh, your pitching motion and stuff is way, way less. So on this boat, it hasn't been loaded up with lots and lots of electronics and, and options, but we have a reverse cycle aircon system here. It's a chilled water system, so that instead of having smaller compressors around the boat in every room, all you have in each room is a fan coil. So you've got cold water being pumped through that and uh, much, much quieter and more efficient as well. We've got a 75 litre water heater. We've got um, a seawater pump here and we've got a dual pump uh, freshwater system here with the freshwater manifold and everything up there you can see on the, on the whole side. Clearly there's all sorts of rooms here to fit uh, water makers, carry spares and things like that. We have the through hole for the water maker, but we haven't fitted the water maker yet because that tends to be a, uh, a personal choice for whoever's going to drive the boat. Uh, we have an 11 kilovolt um, on a gen set, a Helms gen set, which is uh, ample for this boat, powers everything very, very nicely. 
We've got uh, fuel and water. Uh, we have 600 litres of fuel and 600 litres of water. And again, you can see the compression post running down the middle there. They are right under the mast. Okay, so there's you know a ton and a bit of ballast, which is exactly where you want it. Uh, and then on this side, we've got uh, battery charger. We've got five kilowatt inverter, uh, standard battery bank, which is uh, 500 ampere hours, 24 volts. And then just behind this door here, we've got the just the DC distribution board along with uh, battery switches and the two Optima batteries for genset start and engine start. Anybody have any questions on the technical area? No, no questions on the technical area there at the moment, Andrew. There is a question about sailing performance, but I'll let you get back upstairs and we can have a chat about that. All right, cool. I actually had, I've actually just been thinking, I think one thing would be great for this, uh, uh, to help us talk the Neil product is at some stage in the next couple of months, it'd be great to do a sailing webinar where you actually take the boat out and put the sails up and sail it. Sure, no, good idea, good idea. That is one of the most uh, uncluttered, uh, easy to uh, access machinery space and engine rooms of, of any boat that uh, I've seen in a while, Andrew. It certainly is. Now, if you'll just excuse me one second, I'll just turn on the aircon again. So the vision out there is good, Charlie. Excellent. You could swing a very large cat or several large cats around here. Of course, you're on a trimaran, so I'm not sure if you want to do that, but you've got if people who want, to, want pets on board. You've got so much space for them, it's uh, unbelievable. You could probably fit an Irish wolfhound here, have its own bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, pretty much that's the Neil 51. Um, happy to, uh, is there anything else that you'd like me to show you, Greg. Uh, so a couple of questions. So television? Television, uh, there's not one fitted on this boat, only because we didn't tick that box. But normally that would be here. Um, nowadays, you know, there are so many uh, iPads and laptops and things that people use rather than a big ugly TV. We left it off this boat, but should you want it, it's no problem. And then another question, Andy, just if you, even if you want to sit down and we'll do a bit of a Q and A, have a rest. Yeah. Um, the, just, I, I, there's a couple of questions there. Just trying to get a, a grip on the performance aspect of the, the Neil as a comparison to say a new Tremor uh, or a Katana or a, you know, so what one, one would call a performance cruising rather than just cruising cat. Yeah, sure. I think um, Neil 51 against, you know, an Outremer, similar size. Generally, I think the Outremer would beat it on, if you're just looking at sailing performance. Uh, I, I don't think there'd be any doubt about that. But what you lose in uh, living space and the added complications of dagger boards and things like that uh, is really chalk and cheese. Um, if you are just going for performance, then you know this is still a cruising boat and you will not get performance out of any cruising boat until you have you know dagger boards, deep fins and things like that. I think there are there are the 47 is a better performer uh, length for length than the 51 having just won the, the last arc. Um, but uh, you know they all sail very very nicely indeed. Um, and I think, you know, it comes down to stiffness of the structure and being able to keep a, a nice taut buff on the head uh, those sort of things, that, you know, off the breeze, it doesn't matter so much. But again, then you're looking at, uh, at weight, you know, off the breeze, a lot of it's about weight. 
And then the other thing I'd like to bring up and talk about, Andy, is obviously the, the, the Neil Trimoran there at 51 foot is, in terms of its surface area or its, its overall volume, is a bigger boat to ship and a bigger boat to berth than say a, a, a 47 foot Fontaine Bajot and so on. Can you, can you explain a couple of uh, things in terms of the, how you ship the boat to Thailand? And Yeah, I mean, this boat was shipped uh, with Seven Star and we shipped on a cargo ship without, with the mast up and everything. So very, very easy, that was not a problem. Uh, berthing this is really very little different to a catamaran. Um, you know, there are, there are many marinas around the world where you will pay a multi-hole uh, surcharge, but um, it's no different whether you're a trimaran or a cat. What you do have on this boat, for a, a 51 foot catamaran, this is probably 30, 40 centimetres wider, but not very much at all. So if you have a, a multi-hole berth, this boat will fit in just as easily as a catamaran, in, in most instances. When you go to haul this boat out of the water, uh, you can lift this boat uh, with a uh, travel lift, as long as the travel lift obviously uh, will take the uh, 8.9 metre beam. So you can do it with slings as a standard lift, or it's very, very easy to put it on uh, some kind of dolly, uh, a railway line type uh, haul out, which many of the places here in Thailand have. So they'll put a trailer in the water, a hydraulic trailer. Uh, they support the whole boat on the centre hull and then lift the boat and when it's on the harbour, obviously they support the, uh, they'll support the armours. Excuse me, just while I move the paper And is it right, Andrew, that the draft on the Neil 51 is about 1.5 metres? No, the 51, this boat is 1.8. So this yeah. boat is 1.8 metres. You have a, I mean, you can see from when I was in that centre hole, you know, you've got full standing headroom under this floor and you've got a keel of about, uh, about a metre under the hull, okay? So you've got your normal hull and then you've got a keel protruding down about a metre, which is a, a thin keel down the centre of the boat. And now, Andy, you've had that Neil 51 there with you for a number of months now. Um, I think one of the big questions, whether it be a Fontaine Bajara or a Neil, one of the questions is often asked is, how does it go when it first arrives? Have you had much warranty? Uh, how do you feel about the boat in terms of its uh, the way it's wearing and tearing in this first period of time? Pretty, pretty good. Um, it's still a production boat. And uh, there are always issues with every production boat. And I think for people to pretend that they come out of the factory and sail away in, into the white blue without anything being done is uh, not realistic. But um, certainly this boat had sailed for a week in France. And then when we had it delivered here, it came straight off the ship and we had the sails up on the way around to the marina. Since then, uh, warranty-wise, uh, we had a little bit of timber trim that needed doing, um, but very little indeed, very little indeed. The boat has been very, very good as far as warranty goes. And this is, I was very pleased to see that because we did have, in the early days with Neil, we did have some quality control issues and things, but they do seem to have been completely solved and I think this is actually one of the one of the better boats that I've taken delivery of in the way of uh, after sales, you know, issues for sure. Very good, very good. Now, listen, uh, just for everyone that's out there listening to this webinar, we're going to wrap it up shortly. So, if you do have any questions, if you'd like to type them now so that Andy can answer them, uh, we'll give you a minute or two to do that. And then, if there isn't any questions, we'll probably uh, bring the webinar to a close but uh, we'll just give you a minute or two to uh, post your questions if you have them. Um, and in the meantime, Andy, uh, is there fly, what about fly screens and all that? You're in the in the tropics there. How do you go yeah. with shutting the boat up? No, there's the ocean air fly screens on all the hatches. And if you wanted to go for the cockpit tent option, you can have that with mosquito screens and things as well. So uh, it, it's pretty easy to, to keep this boat uh, bug free. It's not, not a big deal.
And sorry, Andy, just going back, you've got the bow thruster there, haven't you? Yes, yep, bow thruster control is at the helm. Um, and the bow thruster, I should have pointed that out too, but the battery system for both the anchor windlass and the bow thruster is under that forward cabin bed. So once you pull the mattress off, you've got access to a bow thruster battery. It's got its own dedicated charging system up there. So it's a complete unit up there that does, um, does the anchor windlass and the bow thruster. And the bow thruster on this boat is, is powerful. Uh, you know, it's not a, a little toy thing. Because it's trimaran, you've got your center hole quite well into the water. So the bow thruster would be this far under the, under the water line so that you do get quite a good grunt out of the bow thruster, which, you know, you can push the bow against tide and wind and things like that, which is critical on a boat like this uh, with only a single engine. It's a big boat. Um, you know, you need to, you need to be aware of, of your beam and your length as you, as you motor around the marina. But uh, really with the bow thruster and this engine, it's, it, it's not difficult to maneuver. If you can maneuver a catamaran, it, you can do this one. Okay, very good. Well, listen, um, we haven't had any other questions other than people saying thank you. Um, that's been a fantastic walkthrough and one that I'm really glad we've done because now we've got this as a resource to put on our YouTube channel and so on. So uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, thanks to you and Charlie for uh, the walkthrough. Is there anything else you'd like to add in closing, Andy? No, just so I think the only thing that I'd like to say is uh, this is a stop boat. And so clearly, if there's anybody interested out there, we'd, uh, we'd like to talk to you about a, a bit of a special deal. And uh, as soon as people can travel and, and see boats again, we'd be very keen to, uh, to see a new owner for this boat and, uh, and get you aboard so you can experience uh, Neil Trimarans for yourself. All right, and listen, um, oh yeah, and sorry, Simon's just asked how long before we get this up to YouTube. Simon, we'll probably do it in around about the next week, but we will get it up there as soon as we can. But, um, but listen, I think that's fantastic. We'll wrap it up and let you guys go and get a cold drink. And uh, on behalf of Rachel and I, thank you both. Uh, excellent camera work, uh, Charlie, and we'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone. I'm just gonna go back to the share screen for one moment. Uh, back to the presentation. Uh, so we've just got um, a, a reminder there of those next webinars. So the next one is in two weeks time on the 3rd of July. So we'll look forward to seeing everyone on that webinar. And for now, we'll, uh, we'll sign off, Rachel, if uh, we, you would like to uh, close on that one. That would be fantastic. Thank you, guys.